Today we're going to talk about Palantir. Specifically, we'll take a look at their most recent earnings announcement and discuss the importance of the rule of 40 when it comes to Palantir. So if you enjoy the video, drop a like down below, and if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. There are a lot of eyes on Palantir right now, and that has caused some volatility in the stock, especially around earnings. Leading into the most recent earnings, we saw the stock move up 15%. However, after they posted, it moved down by about 20%. And we saw even more volatility around Palantir during their previous earnings report back on February 5th, where the stock was trading just under $17 per share and made a move up of almost 50% in just three trading days. With the earnings they announced on May 6th, there was nothing that was very surprising. They came in line with EPS numbers, as well as revenue coming through with a very small beat of about 2.7%, reporting 630 34.3 million dollars of revenue and eight cents of EPS for the quarter. That eight cents of EPS is a non-GAAP metric. In terms of GAAP earnings per share, they reported positive four cents and their revenue number is up 21% year over year. However, only up 4% quarter over quarter. And the reason I say up only 4% is because if you extrapolate 4% over the course of a year by doing four multiplied by four, you get 16% growth year over year. Year. And that's a little bit low for Palantir. I'd love to see that number be maintained in at least the 20% range. And honestly, I think that Palantir will be able to maintain 20% revenue growth. We've seen them actually turn a corner about a year ago where they were growing at only 12.68% year over year. However, in the last three quarters, they have grown 16%, 19%, and then 20%. So there appears to be a little bit of a reacceleration of revenue growth for Palantir. And a lot of that coming around their commercial customer base. U.S. commercial customer revenue grew 40% year over year and is up 14% quarter after quarter to $150 million. They also saw their U.S. commercial customer count grow 69% year over year, up 19% quarter over quarter, and their remaining deal value grew 74% year over year. Their overall commercial revenue grew 27% year over year and 5% quarter over quarter. The U.S. commercial customers, however, are the most important. When you think about the largest businesses in the world, they are all US based. And that is super important that Palantir gets into those businesses and starts getting them using their platform as this will help them expand their business and gain more and more commercial customers. And I was a little surprised by their government revenue. It grew 16% year over year, which is a little bit surprising because last quarter their government revenue only grew 11% year over year. So we're seeing a reacceleration even on their stable government revenue base. I want to spend the rest of this video talking about the rule of 40. This is a metric that Palantir reports in their earnings, and we can see it listed down here at the bottom. Their rule of 40 score is sitting at 57%. So what exactly is the rule of 40? The rule of 40 is a principle that states a software company's combined revenue growth rate and profit margin should equal or exceed 40%. Here we have the rule of 40 shown as an equation. You have their revenue growth rate added to their profit margin, and the expectation is that this should be equal to or greater than 40%. So you may be asking yourself, why is the rule of 40 important? And the reason has to do with it helps investors evaluate software as a service businesses. They can look at the rule of 40 and determine whether a company can sustain its business model for the long term. Basically, if a company is growing the revenue at 40%, and their profit margin is zero, they can make adjustments within their business, slow their growth down slightly, and increase their profit margin and become more sustainable and become a profitable business. The same thing is true if a company has a very high profit margin but very low growth. They can focus a little bit more on customer acquisition, decrease their growth, but increase their profit margin and become a sustainable business. The sweet spot is somewhere in the middle where you have maybe a 2020 back balance, 20% growth and 20% profit margins. And you can see that shown a little bit better here. This is data from 2017 looking at software as a service businesses. On this left axis, we have profit margin. On the bottom axis, we have growth rate. So if you look at a growth rate, let's say of 40% to hit the rule of 40 with a 0% profit margin, you would basically be there. There are businesses that obviously fall above that where they have 40% growth, but maybe 20% margin, and that's excellent 
you also have businesses that fall below that where they have 40% growth and a minus 30% profit margin, which is not ideal. So what you generally want to do is kind of be in this sweet spot in here where you're growing at least 20-ish percent and have profit margins anywhere from 20 to 40%. So if we jump back to Palantir, we know that they have a score of 57% in terms of the rule of 40. That's made up 36% by margin and 21% by revenue growth. So if we put those numbers on this chart, we can see about where Palantir would fall. Again, with 21% revenue growth and 36% margins, that would put them somewhere kind of in this sweet spot zone. If we want to try and be a little bit more predictive and go for maybe a worst case scenario, we could look at their quarter over quarter growth, which is sitting at 4%, which means over the course of the next year, they'll be growing at about 16% year over year in terms of their revenue. So if we consider a revenue growth rate of 16% and a margin of 36%, that would give us a rule of 40 score of 52. And that would put them still well above the 40% mark and put them kind of in this range, which still would be fairly good for Palantir compared to a lot of these other software as a service businesses. And that's without even considering the fact that they have increased their margins for six consecutive quarters. So we could actually see that number hit 38, 40% by this time next year. And we've seen Palantir expand their rule of 40 score by a significant margin over the course of the last year. They were sitting at 38% in Q2 of 2023, and they have expanded that all the way to 57% in the most recent quarter. And the only two times that they have actually fallen below the rule of 40 was that Q2 of 2023 and then Q3 of 2022. One thing to keep in mind is that the rule of 40 does not consider valuation. So this isn't a metric to use to tell you whether you should buy a company or not, but it does give you an idea of whether the business model behind the underlying software as a service business is sustainable in the long term. And that should be very clear for a business like Palantir right now, as they have grown substantially in the last couple of years, especially in terms of expanding their profitability. But keep in mind, do not buy a company just because some random guy on YouTube talked about it. Make sure you are doing your own research and looking into companies that meet your risk tolerance as well as your time horizon. With all that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And for the joke of the day, how many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Check the comments down below for the answer. Thanks for watching.